into Afghanistan where Ken Taubman and Jack Forrest in their Volvo led Dr. Alex Gorshinan in his Mercedes and four times Australian Grand Prix winner Doug Whitefoot in the big Holden Monaro V8. But the real threat, Scottish driver Andrew Cowan, the man and his car. The Hillman Hunter being highly respected by the European crews. Past Kabul and the old camel route to India was to be one of the deciding sections. Climbing mountains that rose to 14,000 feet, it had an impossible average speed of 45 miles per hour. The Khyber Pass, gateway to Pakistan. The only sound echoing through the hills, the snarl of sporting exhausts. Not so many years ago, it would have been the bark of long muzzle rifles. Into India, and greetings from millions of spectators. Three and a half million in Delhi alone. Crowds were like this for hundreds of miles. Six million people lived in Bombay. It seemed most were out to welcome the teams after their 10,000 kilometre journey from London. Cars were loaded deep in the ship's holds for the passage to Fremantle. The stage was set for an exciting finish across Australia. There's never been any rally in history that's gone for 30 days and had special stages every day. There is probably a third of the field that are really dinkum, and the other two thirds are the guys going on a, a, on a big adventure. Victor in the two previous marathons, Scotsman Andrew Cowan led the field away. As two giant Russian Antonov cargo planes touch down on Australian soil on a cold May morning in Perth, our story begins. A story of adventure and of fun, of classic cars and the people that drive them, and a story of a land of extremes and some of the characters that live here. This is the sting in the tail of the world's greatest historic classic car rally, the 1993 London to Sydney Marathon. The 25th anniversary attracted 106 cars from 21 countries, including 25 of the original drivers, some in original cars, all pre-69. For those that had competed in the original event, the cars were marked with red numbers. The Antonovs, the world's largest cargo planes, were specially modified to carry 55 cars each. They'd flown from Bombay, leaving a horror run through India. Extremely high temperatures, the dreaded Delhi belly, an obstacle race with the local trucks road. But it was the end of the road and a life stream for the rally's own Crocodile Dundee, WA driver uh, Ross Duncan. I'm delighted to have the winner of the 1968 bent back here in the same motor car. The own Scottish farmer. He was to become the finest long distance driver the world has ever known. He won the 1977 event in a Mercedes 280 SE and for the 25th anniversary race returned to the totally rebuilt Hillman Hunter. He is, of course, Andrew Cowan. 80% of the competitive motoring of the total event will be in Australia. We've only done 20% of the competitive motoring, so you know you can imagine what that's going to do to the, the cars that are running up front. There are a lot of the cars up front, I mean in front of us in 25th position, that are not really well enough prepared for Australian conditions. Probably they just unfortunately don't know enough about them. and We know what roughly what to expect and we know the car is strong and we think we should have a better chance. At Gloucester Park, the city gave Harry Firth a farewell befitting the country's leading driver. Cowan's roof was well laden for the long overland crossing and the best placed Holden being the Ferguson Shivers car in 12th. Some of the original competitors that really need no introduction, driving a Ford Escort, legendary rally driver Roger Clark. Despite crashing, Andrew Cowan was looking forward to better times. Tell me, what were conditions like? They were typical of showing rally roads, but uh, 
difficult, narrow, sandy, uh, a lot of blind brows with the road coming over them. You know, I'm surprised there weren't more accidents than factor. I have no idea to tell you the truth, I have no idea, but uh, I expect it will be more open today, but I think it's going to be quite rough again. For Barry Gardner's partner and daughter, Jill Diamond, the event is not the only challenge in her life. It certainly gives you a buzz, whereas when you do things as a one-off, um, like a parachute jump or short circuit racing, I mean, you do 10 laps on the track, you get a real buzz. But this is 30 days of continual flowing adrenaline. It's really exciting. Front wheel, I suppose it was a minute and a half, something like that, but um, otherwise it went all right. But once you get behind someone in the dust, uh, you can't get close enough to even think about passing them. Ten kilometres from the end, we came to a detour in very deep mud, a uh, dust rather that had been churned up by the previous cars, and we got stuck on a stump in the middle of it, in a roof, and we lost about 15, 20 minutes. Now that's, uh, that's what marathons are all about. We're still going, the car's still intact. We're just very dusty. It's easy to get a puncture too. There are lots of roots and rocks here. You've got to right turn around this fallen tree and when we got into it there were deep ruts and of course we didn't see the roots underneath which snagged the middle of our car and the wheels were just spinning in the dust and we had to jack it up and put rocks and bits of... So I guess he's ahead of us now by a minute or two. Extremely difficult. I mean, you really had to concentrate all the time. It was very, very easy to be tempted to go quickly. And in this forest here, with lots of stumps along the side of the road, and if you went quickly, just caught one of those stumps, you could have been out the rally. And one wheel. We had one tree, two wheels, and a fun belt. And yes, and a clutch. And a clutch. Oh, you're in front. <laughs> Much of the impact. We're just replacing the screen that was lost last night. And I, and I see you're using the latest in tools. Yes, this is the latest service tool from British Leyland. Uh, dessert spoon. A tiring trip it's across this vast plain. A trip that will take us into the night. We had a, a small mechanical problem and we came to a halt. We got out of the cars, switched the engines and the lights off and we were totally amazed by the sheer silence, by the light anywhere in sight, and this amazing sky overhead, but not a living soul in sight. I just washed it and I can't do a thing with it. Andrew Cowan turned up the wick, driving at, as he said, 110%. Leading the pack, Tuthill was now two minutes ahead of New Zealand's Graham Lawrence. Forward and come down right here, and I was a bit running. You must feel uh, pretty lucky. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> and open this door, because I was trying to get down there and I took the lady up and we were there and the other bloke got another bloke got the, the gentleman out. Scott of the Antarctic by any chance? No we're not but we're the Land Crab Owners Club we've just lost our second screen and um and you're freezing and we're freezing but uh, tell me you've got a new resting uh, uh, position yes it has in, well, it's improved the ventilation on the car it oh. keeps the uh, the cokes cool from the bar, <laughs> and you can keep the circulation flowing nicely. Now, uh, do your windscreen wipers still work? Yes, the windscreen wipers are still good. We've got the wipers, <laughs> and we also, <laughs> when the pressure builds up, have the washers. <laughs> <laughs> 